Thank you. That must mean we can call the meeting to order. Clerk Treasurer Miss, will you please call the roll? Certainly. Uh, Councillor Schoon? Present. Councillor Mellon? Present. Councillor Tulowitzki? Present. Councillor Kulturitis? Present. And President Gardner? Present. Five, all five councillors are present this evening. Okay, then we rise for a moment of silence and our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That brings us to the public comment section. Uh, public comment is limited to two minute maximum per person or five minutes per group spokesman. Please keep your comments civil and constructive to public policy issues. Uh, Chair, at sole discretion may recognize individuals wishing to speak on different topics at any time and may end the open to the public session. All speakers will be timed by the clerk treasurer. This portion of the meeting shall not exceed 20 minutes. Public comments may also be sub submitted electronically um, to Mr. Anderson, our town manager at danderson at munster.org. Uh, Mr. Anderson will ensure all submissions are shared with the elected officials of the town and that submissions will also be entered into the minutes of the meeting. Do we have anybody wishing to speak during the public comment session tonight? Seeing that no, there's no public wishing to speak, we'll close that session and we'll uh, move on to consent agenda. Mr. President, I move to accept the consent agenda as given. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Can we take roll, please? Certainly. Uh, Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Kulturitis? Yes. And President Gardner? Yes. Five zero. Moving on to old business, we have two items under old business. The first is regarding ordinance 1815, 1852 on second reading. Is there anything that we need to add to this ordinance? No, it was, it was, um, it authorizes budget transfers between major expenditure groups. This is something we saw in December and there was no net change in any fund. Mr. President, I move we adopt and we introduce ordinance 1852 on second reading as presented. All seconded. Okay, there's a motion a second. Any discussion? And we'll move to roll call. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Kulturitis? Yes. And President Gardner? Yes. 5 0. Next on the agenda is Ordinance 1853. Uh, 1853. It's a prohibition of, on the retail sale of dogs or cats by pet shops. It is a second reading. Mr. Anderson, anything we need to add to this? No, not at this time. And I would entertain a motion to accept this motion on or uh, ordinance on second reading. I move we have got the uh, ordinance 1853 on second reading as presented. There's a motion, do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Uh, I have a question. Uh, you said this you reviewed this and everything's as good as it can get for us correct so after your last meeting um ms morton um, forwarded the case law that she indicated where the where it's been challenged uh i saw where it was this similar ordinance was challenged challenged in the city of chicago as well as uh, in surrounding cook county the seventh circuit did take it up under the commerce clause Held that it was a valid exercise of your police powers. Um, I think that the rulings are limited to that specific challenge, okay, because there are other provisions both in the state constitution as well as the federal constitution. But um, right now, this ordinance has withstood the only challenge. And then there were some other case law from like out west and things like that. But, um, so for our purposes, it has withstood um, the challenges that are germane. Uh, one of the things uh, that we kind of talked about during agenda review was what we can look at doing is um, addressing this issue the next time. I, I would recommend you pass this ordinance 
I would also recommend that you take a look at um, potentially addressing this issue through zoning. Um, the similar to how you uh, address issues with like fireworks stores or vape shops or whatever with zoning where you it's allowed in a very specific and minute area of the town. So, um, but for tonight's purposes, I know there was some need for you know urgency the last time we took a look at this. We, we've looked at everything that's available that's out there right now. I think it's it's legal and, and it's a policy call, but if it's your pleasure to pass it, I would pass it. And then that does buy us some time to kind of continue to monitor the situation. And I think it's gonna be evolving. I read in some communities, both north and south of here, uh, retail stores have tried to go in and, and they're being um, met with some resistance. So I, I think it's only gonna be a matter of a little bit of time before we see the courts kind of weigh in on this. Any other comments? Any other discussion? Yes. I think no. I, I have no further questions. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. If there's no other discussion. Uh, we'll have the motion or uh, call for a vote. Okay. Uh, Councillor Schoon. Yes. Councillor Mellon. Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki. Yes. Councillor Coltoritis. Yes. And Councillor um, Gardner. Yes. Five zero. And we move on to the partial release of performance bond for 1734 45th Street. Mr. Anderson, is there anything to add to the memo? Or Tom, you can add something too? Uh, no, there's not much to add to the memo. I'll just uh, note that um, in June of, as it says in the memo, in June of 2021, we did accept this, um, this um, letter of credit, or this actually was cash deposit as a guarantee that certain improvements would be completed in connection with the development plan for um, orthodontic specialists at 1734 45th Street. Uh, they were under a bit of a time crunch to get into that building because they were being, uh, their lease was up at their former uh, office. So as a way of helping them kind of get, get going and be, be able to continue their business operations, um, we did let them have a temporary certificate of occupancy on the condition that they provided this uh, this guarantee, so there are um, they've pretty much completed nearly everything on the project. The only thing that's remaining is some landscaping work and uh, the screening of a rooftop uh, air conditioner unit. Um, so those are somewhat weather dependent, which is why they haven't been done yet. Um, and we're so we're holding back uh, nine thousand dollars of the of the deposit. And we're asking that the town council release the other $35,500 um, through the adoption of this resolution. Very good. Thank you. Discussion with the board or any motions? Um, I guess one quick discussion, just a kind of clerical thing. The result and adopted is stated 3rd of January, that I'll be 17th. Uh, so with, with that, I would move to approved resolution 2089, uh, releasing 35,500 of the 44,500 deposit that was posted by Orthodontic Specialist PC as uh, in June, 2021. Second. Very good, second and a motion, or yeah, motion a second. Any other further discussion? I just appreciate the town working with the developer to get them up and running uh, in this way and also protecting them. They do what is required. Thank you. Very good. Clerk Treasurer? Certainly, and the date has been adjusted. Um, Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Coltoritis? Yes. President Gardner? Yes. 5 0. Moving on to Item number B, resolution 2090, authorizing the town manager to execute contracts and documents for the Indiana Department of Transportation. Mr. Anderson, a little explanation. Sure, this is a ministerial action that I'm asking you to consider. The typical way that INDOT uh, works is to create a contract. I present that contract to council. Council says yay or nay and then I uh, execute the contract after your vote. I include a copy of the minutes uh, with my signature showing that you didn't 
indeed vote uh, in the affirmative. Uh, one of the duties that I have uh, given to me by the state is the ability to uh, execute contracts. INDOT uh, wants to do a little bit more than what the law prescribes. And since we want to be good neighbors and good partners, we're going to go ahead and do that. They require either a resolution or an ordinance or the minutes uh, to uh, issue a contract. Now you might say, well, we are, you already give them the minutes. Why can't you do that? Well, they've also changed their workflow where they have to have an authority to sign prior to writing the contract. So having the minutes isn't a possibility because I can't ask you to approve something uh, that they won't show me until I get the authorization to sign it, which seems wacky because it is. So with this resolution, uh, we will be able to once again, bring contracts before you, you can uh, weigh their merits, say yes or no, and then I can sign them uh, after you've made a determination. So we don't have to do this over and over again at the chambers of the and well, next January you will, but until then, no. <laughs> and this doesn't limit it in any way to not sign a contract. To not sign a contract? I, I would not sign a contract if you voted no. Right. 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 <laughs> but, uh, I guess better put, all these contracts will still come before the council for approval. Yes. This just will enable us to get there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I move we approve resolution 2090, resolution authorizing the town manager to execute contracts and documents for the United Department of Transportation. I'll second. Oh, go ahead. I'll second the motion. There's a motion to second. Any further discussion? I just caught the date on this one too. I meant to send an email. Which you did this in. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Additionally, all five counselors are required to sign this. So I will pass it down at the conclusion of the meeting. Okay, cool. Very good. Thank you. Clerk Treasury, roll please. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Colbrightus? Yes. President Gardner? Yes. Item number three, settlement. Um, there's a number, th this is the first of three settlements. Yes, sir. Uh, town manager, would you like to explain this or yep. uh, the explanation? Uh, very simple. Uh, a driver in the town of Munster lost control of their vehicle and destroyed the town fire hydrant. We've worked with their insurance company uh, and they would like to take uh, some uh, amount of the total cost of the replacement value of the hydrant to reflect depreciation, the salvage value. Uh, and we do salvage those hydrants. Uh, we believe this is a fair settlement offer uh, and we recommend that you approve the settlement between the Town of Munster and Progressive Insurance. Mr. President, I move to approve the settlement between Town of Munster and Progressive Insurance. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? One question. Yes. Uh, who, who sells it and gets the salvage money? I mean, are we into selling hydrants? Uh, salvage. We do have some salvage that we do sell, and that money comes back to the town. Okay. So it's not going to be an extra burden or anything on us? No. Very good. Clerk Treasurer? Councillor Scoot? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Coulteritis yes. and President Gardner. Yes. Moving on to item number D, streetlight settlement. Very similar, only this time a driver hit a streetlight. And rather than adjusting the demand uh, based on the salvage value of the hydrant, they requested uh, a $212 break on the, to reflect the depreciation of the value. Uh, that is fair, and we would approve the settlement between the town of Munster and again, Progressive Insurance. Mr. President, I would again approve the move to approve the settlement between town of Munster and Progressive Insurance for this matter. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? No. Okay. Councilor Yes. Councilor Mellon? Yes. Councilor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councilor Coulteritis yes. and President Gardner? Yes. Now it's going to feel like deja vu one more time. Yeah. Moving on to item number E, auto settlement. Mr. Anderson, any explanation on this? Yes. Uh, a town of Munster employee in the operation of a town owned vehicle and conducting town business uh, backed into a driver. Uh, we were at fault. This settlement is. Uh, negotiated by our uh, claims adjuster and our town attorney. 
and the execution of this settlement uh, closes this matter for good. Very good. There's a recommendation. Sure. I'm on a roll. Uh, Mr. President, I would approve the settlement between the town of Munster and Joseph A. Tevez. Second. There's a motion, a second. Any discussion? There, none. There we go with the roll, roll call. I'll please. do the roll call. And this needs to be signed by our attorney, um, Mr. Westland. So, thank you. Um, Councilor Schoon? Yes. Councilor Mellon? Yes. Councilor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councilor Kulturitas? Yes. Council President Gardner? Yes. 5 0. Okay, moving on to item number F, the 45th grade separation, contract number B36229, change order 33, added overrun items. Mr. I, Anderson? No, I have a special guest star, hasn't been here in a while, Lee Randall. Oh. Yes, Lee Randall with DLZ. Can you hear me? Good evening. Yes. Hey. Okay, great. Uh, yes, change order 33 um, is a result following final quantity adjustments for the 45th Street uh, contract um, and unfortunately a contract funding shortfall. So uh, as background, INDOT requires documentation via change order in order to substantiate uh, additional purchase order requests. Uh, since our funding is limited and does not cover all items at this time. So with that, now all quantities have been reviewed and agreed upon with the contractor, uh, at least at the project level. The contract itself was turned into INDOT last week. Uh, so they in turn will also do their review of all the contract documents that I provide. Um, I don't anticipate any changes at that point, but there could be some minor variations as a result of it. With this change order, uh, I've selected um, some various uh, items, existing items underneath the contract to represent this funding shortage. So those have been either existing contract items let with the contract and also some prior change order items that were estimated to begin with. So there are one, two, three, four, um, looks like seven items I have included underneath this change order to account for a projected funding shortage of $89,115.74. So with this change order, that would be an overall increase of 0.436% to the overall original contract price and requesting obviously uh, during this meeting that you approve the, uh, change order 33 as a result. Very good. I, the in the memo, Lee. I yes. think it says at the bottom change order in the amount of two hundred thirty-one thousand five hundred four dollars and forty-five cents. On this one. Yes. Oh. Oh, I must have sent the old one. I am terribly sorry. I've got one a copy in front of me, and and it doesn't say that. So my apologies. Our others counselors seen the same thing. Yeah. It, it looks yeah. like it's correct in the memo part, just under the recommendation. Uh, it, it, yeah, I, for some reason on my hard copy that I printed, I have $89,524.03. Uh, so my apologies for that mistake on the copy that you have. So just for clarity, Lee, the uh, recommendation should read by a motion and roll call vote, approve change order number 33 for INDOT contract B36229 in the amount of $89,524.03, correct? That is correct, yes. So moved. Motion, for a second. I'll second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion or questions for Lee? Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Kulturitis? Yes. And President Turner? Yes. Then we move on to change order number 35 with regards to the same project, supplemental acceleration cost. Uh, 34 uh, is the cost. Can we go to 34, Dustin? Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Here we are. Okay, so change order 34 is a cost adjustment based on a claim resolution for wall three, uh, which was the over excavated backfill material. 
So as background information, of course, the construction of 45th Street included the installation of retaining walls uh, at the underpass corners. <clears throat> those were the T walls and those also had the architectural staining. Um, and that was required by CN primarily due to wall three, these, this wall in question, since it is adjacent to the CN Railroad, most adjacent to, and includes the embankment. Um, per the contract and CN direction, Walsh was required to use the T wall for construction there at wall three, as well as each of the other walls. Uh, there was a unique special provision for retaining walls under this contract, which required select granular backfill within the precast wall segments of those T walls. Um, as it was a pre-bid question and answer item within the contract documents inquired about the backfill to be used beyond the T wall stems for the over excavated area, specifically at wall three uh, within that CN embankment, which stated that existing material excavated from that railroad embankment may be reused uh, to replace the over excavated areas provided it met the requirements of an NDOT specification, specifically a B bar or structured backfill. Uh, existing material was used as backfill for the over excavated area behind wall three. A CN took exception uh, to reusing this material within their railroad embankment due to potential long-term settlement. Um, the engineer of record was involved with CN as well as NDOT and of course DLZ. Uh, CN instructed that they preferred a better use or a engineered material to reduce potential settlement. So with guidance with our engineer of record as well as approval from CN, we agreed to use a crushed aggregate and in Indiana eight cap approved material. This also assisted us with the acceleration of 45th in order to complete that within 2020. Um, following this in December of 2021, um, well, excuse me, 2020, uh, Walsh filed a claim requesting uh, additional costs at, the, at a total of about uh, $41,600 for the over excavation of wall three, as well as materials to backfill that. Walsh's claim was denied at the project level, as well as the district level. Uh, within NDOT's policies, they allow the contractor to request a district uh, review board, which they did. And as a result, that district review board awarded Walsh compensation for the material difference of those aggregates, as well as the geofabric that was placed under those. The geofabric was paid underneath an existing pay item, whereas the aggregates were not. So I see in this, um, yeah, the paragraph there where I say the total cost of this change order in the memo. Once again, I see I made him another error. That should read $19,518.72 to represent the uh, Indiana 8 crushed stone as well as the geotextile fabrics that were placed. So as a result of this, I'm requesting that the approval for this change order 34 as a result of the claim resolution through the NDOT District Review Board be approved for the cost of $19,518.72. Very good, thank you. I know that was a lot, I'm sorry. We <laughs> <laughs> approve change order number 34 for NDOT contract B36229 of $19,518.72. Very good, there's a motion, is there a second? Second. Second, any discussion? Yeah, no, I just want- It says 18 up there, but it's, it says 19, so I'm hoping that's the right. Right, I just wanted to clarify what I heard you say, Steve. Um, the geotextile, that looks like this $989. It, it, was that covered by the project costs and the change order is only for the aggregates? The change order includes both the aggregate and the geotextile. There was an existing pay item that that geotextile was paid as. So that was the $989.34, which in the memo there, I did not include that in the total cost of the change order, but I've also included the change order itself, which 
which does include both items, the material difference for the stone, as well as the fabric. Okay, uh, I just wanted to verify we had the right number with the 19.5. Yes, thank you, my apologies, okay. again. <laughs> Very good, seeing no other discussion, Roll call, please. Uh, Councillor Schoon. Yes. Councillor Mellon. Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki. Yes. Councillor Coltridis. Yes. And Council President Gardner. Yes. Five zero. Okay, now we move on to the last change order, number 35. Yes, change order 35 is the third and final supplemental acceleration cost. So obviously we accelerated 45th Street in order to complete that in 2020. And uh, fortunately, weather permitting um, and other things, uh, we did manage to do so. Uh, we had our, obviously our ribbon cutting ceremony December 18th. Uh, so this change order 35 is a result of reviewing all of the premium time underneath the acceleration agreement, as well as additional equipment uh, and temporary materials in order to complete the acceleration and open 45th Street. So this change order represents a, a final and supplemental cost of $7,119.52 to do so. Mr. President, I would move to approve change order number 35 for in-dot contract D36229 in the amount of $7,119.52. A second there. Very good. There's a motion and a second. Any questions, discussion? Which is a good time. It's the last payment I heard about the acceleration. Um, it was quite a remarkable accomplishment. And now the underpass has been open without ado for more than a year. Uh, it's been a real boon to the, to the town, I think. So happy to pay this one. Thank you. Lee, are there any other uh, items that will be coming in front of us with regards to change, change orders? There may be. Uh, I talked to Dustin earlier today. I realized that. Uh, uh, INDOT sets this up as far as you know any additional items they consider uh, non-participating, meaning that it would be you know 100% sponsored by the town of Munster. Um, one of those previous change orders that had been approved was the curb painting on Calumet and 45th, which uh, that was change order 27. Um, I used an estimated quantity there. Unfortunately, we overran that by 70 lineal feet, which is like $100. Uh, I'm working with NDOT on that to see if it's really necessary that I have to process an additional change order for that amount you know, of $100. Um, and then of course, like I mentioned uh, not long ago that uh, the contract itself has been turned in NDOT. So they will review all of my calculations, all of the pay items, uh, barring any um, uh, rounding errors, uh, which is sometime occur. Uh, that would be about the limit. So any one, maybe two potential additional change orders, but they should be very negligible, if at all. Thank all right, you. so put the champagne back in the fridge, right? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I thought maybe this would be the last time you'd have to hear from me, but uh, uh, it's not so. <laughs> Potentially, but can't close the door just yet. Very good. Any other discussion? No? Wendy? Councillor Schoon. Yes. Councillor Mellon. Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki. Yes. Councillor Coltridis. Yes. And President Gardner. Yes. Moving on from 45th Great Separations, thank you very much for the comments, Lee, and your input tonight. Thank you. Same to you. We will move on to purchase of the new 2022 dump truck for the Street Division Vision Chipper. Yeah, you you'll you may recall uh, this item in a in a weekly update where we had to place the order in advance because the uh, window was closing on us. Uh, thank you for your flexibility and uh, allowing us to do that. We have here uh, a replacement of a dump truck. This is in our uh, capital plan. Uh, we have three bids. We've calculated the trade-in value. Uh, we have the appropriate funds. Uh, and we're looking for your approval to purchase this dump truck. Very good, thank you. Council? Mr. President, I move to approve one 2022 dump truck purchase for net price after trading of $78,816.15 from Garber Chevy to replace unit number 23321. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? I just, um... 
very minor. Did you say 15? I think you might have said 15 cents, 50 cents. Five zero? Yes. You just want to let the record show. Yeah. Yep. Very good. 35 cent difference, but yeah. Any other discussion? Okay. Clerk Treasurer? Councillor Stone? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Coltritis? Yes. And President Gardner? Yes. Item number J is revised 2022 schedule, meeting schedule. I believe the only change on there is the addition of a work study of the Town Council and Redevelopment Commission will be conducted on the Wednesday preceding each regular scheduled Town Council Redevelopment Commission. It is mainly a gender review that just opened up at, at a 4 p.m. and we just made this a regular meeting on the schedule of meetings. So Clerk Treasurer let them uh, announce the meeting every week. That's, I think, the only other change on the schedule. Is that correct? It is, and it looks as though this calendar was not schedule wasn't updated for. Oh, here it's down here. It's, it's down in the written right section. Right in the written section. Okay. Should it be? It doesn't fit. Okay. With the way the calendar works, you can't put it on the matrix. Gotcha. Because sometimes it's the first Wednesday, and sometimes it's the second. And yeah. So. Gotcha. Is it also that the park board has gone to one meeting per month instead of two? Yes. And it's on there on the third. I think that's the other change oh. on this calendar. I think that change was, well, I thought that change was on the first one, but. That might have been on last yeah. meeting, January in 3rd. December, but no, it could have been on okay. December. It's fine, but yes, it's a good thing to point out. Yeah. The park board is only meeting once per month. Very good. Any other comments with regards to this meeting schedule? Do we have to approve this? No. It's just out here for mainly discussion, right? Or I think announcement? it's to be announced, yeah. Okay, then uh, item K is another more or less announcement. That's the Town Council 2022 portfolio assignments um, listed per counselor with regards to the Redevelopment Commission, Civic Foundation, Nominating Committee, uh, Plan Commission, Park Board, Lake County, mm -hmm. Solid Waste, uh, BZA, Board of Safety assignments. Okay. I is there a reason the Hammond Sanitary Commission is not listed? An oversight? It's the Hammond Sanitary. Oh, is that? Are you on that, Ken? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I know that Mr. Hawkins is. That's a very yeah. important one. Yeah. That's actually the most contentious. Uh, Ken, you will be the, the liaison for that again. Okay, yeah, congratulations. Thank you, and I will get that updated on this portfolio listing, and I apologize, I don't know where, where it is. Thanks, Ken. And then would you send out the list again? I will resend it, and then the corrected version will be included in the minute. Okay, great. Okay. Hang on, let you know to do that. Resend, and that's Hammond Sanitary District. Ken, when do they need, Councilor Schoon, when do they need? Uh, second and fourth, well, it's not always the same, but generally the second and fourth Tuesdays at, uh, at 4 o'clock. 4 p.m., thank you. 4 o'clock is important because then I can get to park 4 o'clock. Very good, thank you. Okay, very good. Any other comments with regards to the 2022 portfolio assignments? Okay, next on the agenda is board and commission appointments. Uh, there are four appointments to the boards and commissions that expired on December 31st, 2021. These board members serve on these boards until a time in which they are either reappointed by the town council or another person is appointed by the town council. The four board appointments that expired on December 31st, 2021 are Dr. Bob Dershowitz, Board of Safety. His initial appointment was uh, July 17th, 2020. Mr. Jerry Baffa, Board of Safety, initial appointment was February 10th, 2003. Mr. Jonathan Peterson, Board of Zoning Appeals, initial appointment was 12-30-2013. And the fourth appointment was Mr. Dan Repay, he's on the Park Board. His initial appointment was two, uh, February 10th, February 10th, 2014. Uh, town Council can do one of the, uh, one of the, three different things. They can reappoint one, two, three, or all four of these board members tonight. We can either refer this to uh, town council members can review each of these appointments and bring back the recommendation to appoint any or all of these appointments at the next council meeting, 
or we can refer one, two, three, or four of these appointments to the nominating committee um, and have the uh, that committee meet, interview and recommend back to the town council uh, for either reappointment or appointment of new people to these positions. Um, please note that all the above board members, all four of them have expressed interest in remaining uh, on their respective boards. Um, I would like to, to start the, I, I guess there's one board member that um, was recently appointed on July 17th on the Board of Safety. I, I serve as, or recent the last two years served as the Board of Safety uh, liaison. Um, I feel it's appropriate that uh, his appointment should, we should reappoint Dr. Bob Dershowitz for uh, the next three years, mainly due to the fact that he, he only served two out of the three years uh, filling out another person's appointment. Uh, so I would like to first um, uh, right, or, um, acknowledge if there's any motion to just appoint uh, Bob, Dr. Bob Dershowitz as a Board of Safety appointment for the next three years for the Board of Safety. So moved. I'll second. There's a motion uh, and a second. Um, can we take roll call on that, please? Um, Councillor Scone? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Coulteritis? Yes. And President Gardner? Yes. Uh, the remaining three members um, have all uh, one uh, have, have all served at least seven years, uh, have all been reappointed at least one time. Um, I guess I would leave this up to discussion with amongst the council here if there's any, um, if we should, um, if you want to look at each one of these individually or if we want to group these all three together and make a recommendation uh, on what we should do with regards to either appointing these members or reappointing them or de deferring the matter to the, the nominating committee. Mr. President, I move that we refer these to the nominating committee. I'll second. There's a motion, a second. Is that, when you say these, the, the remaining three? All three. All three, okay. Is there a discussion? I would, I would just like to say that I realize there's, it's been expressed um, several times that people want to try to get new people involved in the boards and commissions. And, um, and these are basically volunteer positions. And these volunteer, it's, although we want to get new people involved, um, the people that we are referring to for reappointment, they've been um, very dedicated. Um, active um, for, I, I can just think of one thing off the top of my head. I know that that during the last summer we had um, Mr. Repay actually left a family wedding because there was no staff answering a call. There was like something urgent and it wasn't because, I mean, staff is also responsive, but because there was no staff available, he spent like a couple hours out in the parking lot trying to figure out how to handle something that was pretty uh, pretty stressful at the pool. A patron was, you know, um, threatening an employee. So anyway, there's a lot of dedication. It's not just a lot of times people will volunteer for things just to be on something, but they often don't do a whole lot. I don't think that's the case with this. And unlike other volunteer positions, you can add volunteers, but this we're saying we're going to replace these people. And, it, and to me, that's that's just a difficult. I think there's a, there are other ways to get other people involved. That's just, that's my two cents. Very good. Other comments? I guess how I would look at it, I mean, Dr. Dershowitz, he was just appointed uh, by the nominating committee. They've just looked at that, so that makes sense to reappoint him here. Um, as a matter of policy, I just don't see these appointments as lifetime appointments. And if people are interested in going again, it might be an extra step to sit before the nominating committee and they probably have a good leg up to say why they are the best candidate to do to to repeat their uh, service in a, in a in a subsequent year. And that would give the nominating committee a chance to you know choose the best person for for the job or make a recommendation to the council to, to make that uh, if I, I like to think of it if I was running a company and I had a chance to look at the best candidate for positions on my boards. Would I want to do that or 
or not. Uh, if they're the best candidates, then they'll, they should have a pretty easy walk through to get reappointed. We have a nominating committee. It's also a way to get people involved in, in the town who are serving on, on that committee. So that would be my that would be my recommendation. Just thinking about running the town as a, as a business. Very good. Any other comments? I guess I would always, I did mention that all the, the board members did express an interest to remain. Um, I did not mention, I think each one of them have served with distinction and, and much dedication over the course of the last uh, number of years too. So I, I would uh, make sure that I would echo um, Councilor Mellon's, there has been a lot of the dedication um, on, on behalf of these three, three folks. Uh, other comments, questions? If not, roll call please. Uh, Councillor Schoon. Yes. Councillor Mellon. No. Councillor Post that threw me off. Um, Councillor Tulowitzki. Yes. Councillor Kultritis. Yes. And President Gardner. Yes. Very good. These matters, uh, these positions will be announced to the uh, nominating committee and we'll be meeting with them. Again, the nominating committee is a nine person committee. Uh, I serve as the liaison to that committee. Uh, we will be trying to meet the early part of February. However, we do want to make an announcement in the news you can use. So there's kind of a logistical thing that we can't be too soon with that nominating committee. So um, I will keep the council uh, aware of what's happening. Are there any reports? Okay, uh, portfolio reports. Announcements, all town council meetings will start at seven o'clock. There are no meetings the next two weeks. February 7th, we'll have another regular Town Council and Redevelopment Commission, and then also on February 21st. February 14th, you can enjoy Valentine's Day. Um, there is a uh, announcement I'd like to make about an upcoming meeting. The Munster Civic Foundation is going to have a special event summit on February 23, February 23rd in this meet, main meeting room. It's mainly a chance for us to bring the different groups in town, um, service clubs, um, other people that run special events, other people that want to volunteer for special events, try to bring them all in the same room so we can talk about the upcoming calendar events for the 2021 seat or 2022 um, rest of the year. So that is the first meeting that we're going to have. We will be sending out announcements to different the various clubs and special events groups. Um, uh, and if you know of anybody that should be invited to that meeting, I would ask you to give me their email address and contact information and we'll get that out. And again, that's on February 23rd. Any other comments? Any other meeting announcements? Chuck, that, uh, Mr. President, that just sparked one uh, thought. I think on our boards and commissions <clears throat> application that people fill out, Monster Civic Foundation is one of those options. So anyone who has to check that as we're going through that for nominating committee anyways, that might be worth giving them an email to let them know about the 23rd meeting, if that's an appropriate venue for them. Very good. Thank you. If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are we ready to launch right into the Redevelopment Commission? Yes. Woohoo, this is my time to die. Thank you. Um, I'd like to call the January 17th Redevelopment Commission meeting to order at 744. Oh, John, to be seated. Well, thank you. <laughs> I got okay, so was... excited that I get to run the meeting for the first three, 30 seconds. So. I get to run the meeting for the first 40 seconds. I'm going to do a quick roll call. Commissioner Schoon? Yes. Commissioner Present. Mount? I'm here. Yeah. You're really all throwing me off lately within the last little bit. Uh, Commissioner Mellon? Yes. Commissioner Tulowitzki? Yes, here are present. All right. And we have Commissioner Culturitis? Present. Commissioner Gardner? Present. And we have School Board Liaison John Castro? Present. Nice to see you. Nice to see you all. All right. Yeah. So the meeting is called to order at 744. Again, we have public comment. In-person public comment is limited to two minutes maximum per person or five minutes for a group spokesperson. Keep your comments civil and constructive. The chair is at the sole discretion to recognize individuals willing to speak, wishing to speak, um, and may end the open to public session. All speakers will be timed by the clerk treasurer.
This portion of the meeting will not exceed 20 minutes. Public comments may be submitted electronically. Town Manager Anderson, have you had any public comments for the Redevelopment Commission? I have not. Very good. Is there anyone in person that would like to speak, make a public comment? Very good. I close the open to the public portion of our meeting. Now, the reason I'm speaking is we did not organize the Redevelopment Commission, so I will entertain a motion for President of the Redevelopment Commission. Chuck Gardner be President this year. I second it. Any, are you willing to accept the nomination? Yes. Any further nominations or discussion? I'm going to take a roll call vote. Commissioner Schoon? Yes. Commissioner Mellon? Yes. Commissioner Tulowitzki? Yes. Commissioner Kulturitis? Yes. And Commissioner Gardner? Yes. Congratulations. You are now the president of the Redevelopment Commission, and I hand the proverbial gavel over to you. Okay, then I will entertain a motion for any, uh, for, is it vice chairman? What is this committee? Chairman? I think it's a chairman. Chairman. So it's Mr. President, Mr. President I'm Dan Mellon to be the vice chair of the Redevelopment Commission. Second. Okay, there's a motion to second. You accept that nomination, yes. I guess. Okay, Thank then you. we will move forward with roll call. Commissioner Schoon? Yes. Commissioner Mellon? Yes. Commissioner Tulowitzki? Yes. Commission Commissioner Kulturitis? Yes. And Commissioner Gardner? Okay. Then there on item number two is consent agenda. Uh, wishes of the board? We accept the consent agenda. Second. There's a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Stoon. Yes. Commissioner Mellon. Yes. Commissioner Tulowitzki. Yes. Commissioner Kulturitis. Yes. And Commissioner Gardner. Yes. Very good. Five zero. There's no old business, no new business, no reports, no announcements. Make a motion for adjourn or entertain a motion for adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we shall complete this meeting. All right.